Hello everyone, this is Butch in the W4DXE Signal Shack. Uh, today I wanted to uh, post this video to look at um, the functions of my Signal uh, SDS 1102CML Plus. Um, I've been still trying to test some of the functions on it, so I found this uh, video on YouTube about a, uh, using your scope as a uh, transistor curve tracer. Um, so I'll put a link below to that video. Um, it's by Eddie Bergman. Uh, it's a guy over in the, the, the uh, Netherlands. And uh, it works pretty good. So, uh, and he actually uh, took this circuit and he uh, built it up on a uh, permanent uh, circuit board. Uh, I'm just going to use a breadboard for this, but um, the what I use for the uh, uh, germanium diode is a uh, 1N34A. And uh, so I'm going to show both. Uh, I'm not going to go into this circuit a lot because he covers it uh, quite well. And plus, there's a uh, in that video, there's a link to his web page with all the details of it, so I'm not going to get into that. I just wanted to show what it looks like on my scope, and I'm also going to show what it looks like on an uh, um, analog scope, so you can take a look at what, uh, what both uh, waveforms look like and how it operates um, on these scopes. So the Scopes will be set to uh, XY mode. Um, for the the digital, I'll have uh, X for the channel one, and then Y uh, will be channel two. And this is the uh, common terminal. Uh, it'll be just the opposite in the analog scope. For some reason, it kind of flips it around even with inverting Y one. I haven't put much thought into it, but anyway, it's. Uh, that's how it's going to be set up for this uh, video. All right, so here's the transistor curve tracer on an analog scope. This is nothing very basic. It's a, a BK Precision 20 megahertz dual trace, so uh, nothing special there. So I have the uh, XY on, and so that means that this horizontal time per division does nothing. The uh, channel 2 is controlling the uh, horizontal and the uh, channel 1 is controlling the vertical. So you can see the uh, at each that we have the uh, VCE here and then going upward along the y-axis we have the IC uh, and then for each step we have the the base current. Get it in here closer. So not so bad looking on the uh, analog scope. Uh, we'll take a look at what it looks like on the Siglent uh, scope, the uh, SCS 1102CML Plus. See uh, how that looks. All right, so this is the transistor curve tracer on the Siglin. Uh, you can see we still have uh, five steps here of the base current. So basically there's one down here, one, two, three, four, five. What you can do is, in, uh, as it says in Eddie's, uh, Eddie Bergman's video, you can swap out the capacitor uh, C4. It's the ratio between C4 and C5 that gives you the steps in the base current. So what I did was I took a 100 nanofarad. I took two of them, put them in parallel. I got two uh, 200 nanofarads. So let me show you what that looks like. You can see the increased steps. Okay, so now with the 200 nanofarads in there, we're up to about nine eight or nine steps of the base current. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back to default. So this is the default button. Here's the default. So we only have channel one active. It goes to default settings. 
and then I'm going to go to uh, auto just to see where it puts it. So those are the waveforms that we're actually looking at on X and Y. Then if you want to uh, select um, the XY, you go to, uh, go to display, go to page 2, and then go select XY. Then you have to uh, adjust the horizontal a bit, which is the X. And then you can adjust uh, the Y with channel 2. And we're back there at it. And you can play around with some filtering. Um, also, there's a possibility for, let's see, go to horizontal, find it. So you can increase the memory depth, depth. if you press the horizontal menu. You can uh, get more selection. See, it right here I'm at 250 kilohertz. Let me get in on this a little bit more. Adjust this. Okay, so I'm at, the sampling is 250 kilohertz. If I go to um, long memory, now I've got 10 megahertz sampling. Also, the as with the CRT scope, analog scope, the horizontal adjustment didn't do anything, but with this scope, it's selecting the amount of um, the sampling. So as I'm creasing right there, now I'm at 25 megahertz, and you start getting kind of kind of odd looking readings. Let me go take it out of put it to normal. We're at 250 kilohertz, and now as I adjust this, I'm at 125 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz. 25 kilohertz, 12.5 kilohertz, go back up to 5500, starts getting a little choppy in it. I guess 125 kilohertz is not bad. Um, so I believe that's about it on this as far as the uh, of um, setting this up. Uh, let's see, there might be some filtering we could probably do a bit more. Let's go to put the bandwidth limit on. I don't see much change, but putting the bandwidth limit on, you can go to page uh, two and select filtering, and you can set your upper um, limit. I think uh, Eddie says to limit it to 20 kilohertz in his uh, video or his web page, if I set it in it. It really doesn't matter. I mean, pretty much setting it to uh, XY mode and then adjusting your sampling rate, setting your uh, X and Y position is about all you really need to do. Uh, again, changing out the capacitor C4, you have to experiment with that. Uh, he He's getting a little bit different uh, uh, ratio than what I'm getting. I, I'm not sure why uh, his ratio is a bit different. Maybe I have my capacitor selection or type or something is different. but. Uh, the type really shouldn't matter. It's all in the uh, uh, ferret value. So I believe that is it on this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, I'll have the uh, link below to uh, Eddie Bergman's video. See you next time. Um, next time I'll do something a little simpler but with the scope. Uh, we'll probably look at a Schmidt trigger and exercise the scope a little bit more. All right. See you. Bye.